Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am jumping in with an intro before the intro you are about to see because I realized that I never told you how many strips you needed and squares for the quilt that I ended up making. I did make adjustments. I was going to do four columns at first and a certain number of rows but I changed to three columns and one row shorter. So whatever I told you at the beginning, I don't know, just forget about that. Um, I'm going to give you the info for what I ended up making. The size finished with the borders, as you see it on the bed at the end of the video, is 41 and a half inches wide by 60 inches tall. That's a good size. So if you wanna make the exact quilt that I made, here is what you need. You need 111 10 inch by 2 inch strips and 111 2 inch squares. Let's start with the strips. If you cut the full width of the fabric, a strip, a 2 inch strip, you can get 4 10 inch strips out of that. So you're going to need 28 strips of full width of the fabric. And again, you can mix and match any way you want. 28 strips full width of the fabric. That means, because they're two inches tall, that you're going to need, let me see if I'm looking at the right stuff here, 56 inches of fabric, which is a little less than one and two thirds of a yard. You know, if you have two yards of fabric, you're going to have plenty, and there's room for mistakes that way, so. As for the squares, you can get 20 out of the full width of the fabric. And again, the strips are going to be two inches tall. So you're going to need six strips, full width of the fabric. That's gonna give you some extra squares, but that's okay. And you're going to need a third of a yard of fabric for that. And again, if you want some wiggle room, go for a half yard. My inner border was one and a half inches cut strips full width of the fabric and you're going to need five of those and you know again you can always cut six or make sure you have enough to cut at least another strip in case something goes wrong for my outer border you'll notice when you watch that I had a three inch border on top and bottom and then four inches on the side just because that's all I could get out of the fabric if you want to do exactly what I did you're going to need two three inch strips full width of the fabric and then you're going to need four full width of the fabric of four inch strips and that's a total of 22 inches of fabric which is exactly what I had but if you want to do four inch borders all the way around then you're going to need 24 inches of fabric which is two-thirds of a yard again you might want to bump up to three-quarters of a yard or even a yard just to make sure that you have room to make some mistakes and I did want to mention also that even though this is not like a traditional Christmas quilt the colors are awesome for Christmas especially if you don't want you know just you know always that typical red and green and Santa prints and things like that yeah it's just a nice quilt but I think it's great year-round because to me it's like more oriental than Christmas. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, I hope you enjoy the video that you are about to see. Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with my Batik Strips and Squares quilt. When I left you last, I had one more column to make, which I have made. And before I tell you what I've decided on, let me tell you about two major mistakes that I made. So when you make the same mistakes, <laughs> In case you do, you won't feel so bad. I noticed that one of my strips had two red squares butt up against each other, which meant that when I sewed my block on, I turned it. So that was easy. I just picked out one row, turned it, and put it back in. Actually, I had to pick out in two places because it was in the middle of a column. Turn that, put it back in. Then on another strip, I noticed that I had um, something out of sequence and it really wouldn't have mattered, but I was, you know, doing a sequence, so I wanted it to be correct. So in that case, I think I had to pick out just um, two, uh, like two that I sewed together and turn those. Here's what I decided. My row with the dark, I like that at the two corners. So when I had this, I had said I would recreate this row to put here. 
but instead I changed the order of these two and I recreated this one. And then I thought I would like all the dark on top, you know, and everything to go in the same sequence, whereas this doesn't. So I thought, oh, that's easy. I'll just uh, turn this one and the dark will be at top at the top but see now that doesn't work for me because I would need a red here and I don't have it and here I have two reds and I don't have it so then I thought all right I can <laughs> pick this out make this the top and then add this to the bottom and that still doesn't quite work so I'm just going with this and I think I kind of like it better with the darks not all across it it just makes it I don't know I just like it now I just need to attach these two columns and we have a bunch of intersections happening here. I'm just going to do the best that I can. They're certainly not going to match up. That's okay. I think this is pretty busy. There's a lot going on. I don't think uh, mismatched intersections are going to matter too much. If you don't like that, you can add a strip of sashing and then you don't have to worry about your intersections at all. Gee, do I want to do that? I don't really. I don't think. I'm just going to sew like that. Should I trim? I think I'm pretty good here. I don't think I'm going to bother trimming. At least not these two. They look pretty good. I did a surprisingly good job. Most of these match some, like, next to perfect. <laughs> I have a couple that are off, like right here, right here. But like I said, there's a lot going on here. It doesn't matter. I did want to mention that if you want this happening, then all your top rows have to start with the red in the same position. In my case, to the right. Strip, red to the right. And the next one, the same. The strip with the red to the right. Huh? What? Are you kidding me? Did I sew something wrong? I'm going to cry major tears. Because look, this isn't right. Oh my goodness. That doesn't make any sense unless... Was this the one that was supposed to go there? That would have worked, but then that wouldn't have worked. Are you telling me I made a whole row, column, I should say, with that in the wrong direction? Oh my god, this is not good at all. All right, I gotta stop and think about this. That was a complete heart attack moment. <laughs> I just had to turn both of the pieces upside down. I don't know how come that worked, but it worked. So I'm good. I'm good to go. Oh my God, that was awful. Again, if you don't do any kind of a sequence, you're going to be fine. Just put everything together. Another thing you want to be careful of, make sure you have prints that are non-directional, you know, that can go uh, either way. So you don't have to worry about that either. Just uh, small prints that just can be turned. Okay, I am going to now, oh, so happy, sew this to this, flipping it like this. And once again, I'm going to be wild and crazy and not trim the columns. My intersections did not come out as good on this one. I think it's because I was still in shock. <laughs> You know, I had to turn the camera off, and I was like, this, this isn't wrong. I just have something twisted, because I was so careful to make sure that the pattern was going to come out all right. But I do, you know, so late at night sometimes, and I'm tired, and yeah, I screw up. And again, not great intersections happening on this one. But that 
there's nothing I can do about that at this point. We're just going to live with it. Oh, by the way, and the reason I point that out is because this is going to be on eBay as an auction. Bidding starts at one penny. Free shipping for the USA. Outside of the USA, you must pay shipping, but please get an estimate. There's a place that you can get an estimate for the shipping charges. Do that, and then after you wake up from passing out, <laughs> You can decide if those shipping charges are worth it to you or not. And, uh, all right, here's one thing I want to mention. Now, you can see on the edge here, we don't have, you know, another row. With my scraps, I thought of doing something, but I'm not going to. But I have some strips, extra strips cut, and I still have a bunch of the little squares. But I thought I could take my strip and, uh, you know, I could use these strips to make two inch squares of the different greens and then make little two patches of red and green. And then I would be able to sew them like this. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd want to go in the sequence or not, but you know what I mean? You would end up having just a, a row of little two inch squares like this and that would finish off the edge that way if that's something that you would prefer. But since I'm going to put a border on it, I don't think I'm going to bother with that. And when I say I don't think I'm going to, I mean I'm flat out not going to. I know this for a fact. Just for the sake of time. Now I have to think for a little bit about my border. I would like to figure out and see if I have enough of this red left to do just like an inch border around and then do a bigger border after that. So here's how I figure out my borders. This is the length folded. So it's about 27 inches. So I have to double that and then double that. So because this is folded in half because I have a border on each side. So I'm just going to say 27 times 4. Okay, that came out to 108 inches. Now my border, I want it to be an inch, but I'm going to cut my strips an inch and a half. So now I'm going to measure across, that's 33, but I also have to add an inch and a half on each side. That's 3 inches, so that makes it 36 inches. I need top and bottom, so I have to double that, 72 inches. That gives me a total of 180 inches that I need. I divide that by 40 because I know that I can get at least 40 inches wide across the width of my fabric. So that means I need about four and a half strips, so five strips. I have to cut five strips, but I have to be able to cut them an inch and a half in this direction. So I have to say five times an inch and a half. That's seven and a half inches. And I certainly have seven and a half inches here. So I'm going to cut my five strips at an inch and a half. I have my five strips. So I'm going to do the sides first. I'm going to just piece some strips and then I should be able to use just one strip for the top and one strip for the bottom, and I'll be good. You guys, it's so cool for me to see one of my quilt tops with a border around it. That is so awesome. And now I'm going to add a bigger border, and I really think, where is it? Where's the one that I didn't use? Is it this one? Oh man, I'm not going to have as much as I thought. Well, I have quite a bit. I thought I'd like to put this as a bigger border. This print is not anywhere in here, and I like that. It'll be like the frame, and it has some really nice reds, fuchsia, almost pink, purple, whatever. I think it's going to go good, and it's a darker green. So now I just have to figure out how many strips I need of this. I'm going to do something that I don't think people do. <laughs> this is, you know, quite a bit longer than it is wide because I didn't do the uh, fourth column, even though I took one strip, one row of strips out at the bottom. 
So I'm going to cut the top and bottom only three inches and the sides four inches. And it's just going to have the border be a little bit wider on the sides. It'll give it a little bit extra width. I don't know. Is that allowed? Oh, yes, it is because there are no rules. We can do whatever we want. And I don't even think it's going to show all that much. So I'm going to cut two three-inch strips and four four-inch strips. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yes, I can do that. It'll use up almost that whole piece. I will do the top and bottom first and then the sides. And as always, when I piece these together, I don't care where that seam lands. Wherever it goes, that's where it belongs. It's done and it is so beautiful. I'm going to wait until tomorrow to put it on the bed and take the pictures and show you what it looks like on the bed. So you're going to have to wait just a few seconds. It is tomorrow and here it is. I absolutely love this one. It's probably my favorite that I've made so far. If not, it's in the top five for sure. I love the way the uh, greens are staggered. I'm glad I did that because I just think it adds some interest. It like gives it some movement. I love the little red zippers going down and with the border on the sides of red it finished off those little lonely blocks but like I said you could have finished it off with a zipper style if you felt like cutting more squares. I already gave you that info in the um, intro that I did but I do want to mention that um, you can do this with any size strips and squares. You could do three inch strips and three inch squares. You could also cut your strips down a little bit instead of a 10 inch strip and a two inch square. Uh, you could do like a six inch strip if you want more columns but you don't want it to be really, really wide. You can do whatever you want. I just think this is so incredibly cool. I'd love to do one of these again. I know I say that but I have haven't yet revisited one of my old quilts. So I'm going to uh, take a lot of pictures, show you this up close. I don't have good intersections in most places and I do have a lot of flipped seams on the back but other than that I just think this is really really nice. Go check out the penny auction. The link is down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!